Good morning. It's great to see you on this rainy Sunday. Yay! You're supposed to go, yay! Well, we need the rain. It looks like another one's coming up while we're in here, so that'll be fine, and we'll let it rain and uh, make our flowers grow, and that'll be great. Good to see all of you today. Uh, welcome back. Oh, no, I've been gone. Anyway, it's good to be back with you. I want to thank uh, Jack Brewer for pre preaching last week. It was good to have Dr. Brewer with us and uh, let him share, and uh, he did a great job, and I'm so grateful for him. What a, what a, what a great partner in ministry. Uh, Jack Brewer is and I want you to know that and be sure to thank him when you see him I want to welcome all of you if you're a guest with us today we're especially glad you're here I want you just to sit back relax and enjoy our worship time together we have a special day planned for you we're going to talk about uh, the foundation for life and uh, that's an important thing that all of us need I want to uh, take a moment uh, as our ushers bring our uh, uh, our pads down, our attendance pads down, fill out that information, pass it down the pew, make sure everybody on your row signs that, and then pass it back so that you can greet everybody by name. Listen, friends, I want to tell you that's so important that don't let anybody get out of here, don't let it happen without being greeted, okay? Uh, we've had some experiences with that in days gone by, and it's a, it's a tough thing. So make sure everybody gets greeted. That's, that's number one. Number two, next week is Promotion Sunday. And uh, yay, so some of you are moving up, yeah. And so we're looking forward to that. In, in worship next Sunday, we want the children to bring their backpacks for school. Bring that. We're going to recognize uh, them and bless those backpacks, bless their teachers. We're going to bless our Sunday school teachers and uh, kind of make a big deal out of that promotion Sunday. We look forward to that. I want to thank Tanya Kenner for getting that all together. Tanya, thank you. Appreciate you on that and uh, look forward to that. Uh, check out your bulletin. On the very back there is that huge announcement about Chautauqua. The series begins here a uh, week after next, and you're going to love it. It's going to be, I get goosebumps just telling you about it. Uh, the very first uh, night is going to be the uh, Frankfurt uh, Community Band and the First United Methodist Church Summer Choir, and they're going to sing your socks off, and it's going to be awesome. Uh, and you can read all the other announcements about upcoming events, but it's going to be a great time. Also, inside uh, your bulletin, look at the announcements there. Uh, kids camps this week. Uh, First Needle's doing a sewing day coming up, and that's a huge, important project that they're doing. Uh, Mountain Mission Truck is coming, but before it gets here, we got the 127 yard sale, and the youth will be collecting items. Please help the youth here for that. That's coming up uh, we'll, in the next uh, 10 days or so. Uh, August the 7th through the 10th, I believe it is. So we want to be sure that the youth have lots of items to sell at their yard sale. This is their huge fundraiser, and we want to promote that. And so if you need some help uh, moving something, uh, getting something out there to Joe and Abby Meyer's house where they're going to be, uh, just give us a holler, and we'll try to work something out and make sure that that happens. Uh, Triple L events coming up. Lots of great things happening in our church, and we're glad that you're here today. Now, friends, let's stand and let's greet one another. You may be seated. Boy, the joy of the Lord is in this place today. Boy, we give thanks for that. Friends, let's now prepare our hearts as we worship the Lord.
morning. Good morning. Please stand and join in the call to worship. <clears throat> in all times and in all places, God is with us. God's love flows over and around us, lifting us in hope. Shout for joy. Sing praises to God. Get ready to be disciples for Jesus. Lord, make us ready to serve you. Please remain standing and turn in your hymnals to 529, How Firm a Foundation. seated. Today as we gather in this place, uh, we gather bringing our joys and our celebrations. We have lots of blessings to be thankful for. and We are truly a blessed people. We're blessed to be a blessing to others. We also though bring concerns, needs, and cares for family members and neighbors and those literally around the globe. Today we certainly pray for the Middle East as we have done for years and years and years and years. But we continue to pray for peace. And friends, today as we, we pray, we, we seek God's vision for our lives. And I want to invite you to join me in, in looking at your bulletin there where it says the community of prayer. We have a responsive prayer that I want you to start and then I'm going to respond to you. This will be familiar to you. So let's share it together. Ready? Here we go. Be thou my vision, O Lord, of my heart. Be thou my vision, my life, my all. Be all that I need and all that I can hope for. Not be all else to me, save that thou art. Lord, enlarge my vision of who you are. You are enough for me. You are more than enough for all I need. Thou art in the day and the night. And 
inhabit my thinking, O oh God. Inhabit the deepest recesses of my mind. L lift my thoughts and desires towards you. Waking and sleeping, thy presence my light. Let us pray. Today, O oh Lord, as we gather in this place, we, we rejoice in the opportunity to glorify you. For we are humbled, knowing that everything we have comes from you. We have each other. We have this great church. We have our community. We have our friends and neighbors. And Lord, most of all, we have Jesus Christ. Who chose to die for us because Lord we truly know that no one in this room is perfect we're all sinners saved by grace and it is through that grace that we have new opportunities for new beginnings and fresh starts Lord we're here today to offer our praise and gratitude for the blessings you give us we also gather today in the knowledge that there are many many things for us to pray about we pray for those that we love and know and we pray for those that we don't know that are suffering in some way the world is filled with hurt and pain disease and sickness and we have our cert certainly we have our share of that in this community of faith we pray oh God that your healing in the name of Jesus Christ would come upon those that are struggling we thank you for those that are gifted with healing doctors nurses technicians and staff we pray that in the name of Christ that you would flow your power would flow through all of us that we would be witnesses of your love we pray again O oh Lord for comfort in those for those that grieve we pray that the blessing of your of your son Jesus Christ would fill the void in our hearts left by those that we've loved so dearly we gather today Lord knowing that as individuals and as a church, we, we have many decisions to make in our days, day to day. And we thank you, Lord, that in this journey of life that you are with us. Your divine guidance, your wisdom, give us what we need. And so today as we pray, Lord, we pray a prayer for our world and its leaders. We pray for peace. And we pray the, that prayer often, Lord. We're kind of like those who wait in heaven with you that cry out how long O oh Lord how long bring, Lord, Lord bring your heal, healing bring your peace bring your understanding to places far and wide that struggle Lord thank you for this time to gather thank you for the rain that falls thank you for caring for this great earth and thank you O oh Lord for this time to worship Thank you for the freedom and the liberty that we enjoy. And thank you, Lord, for protecting those that protect us. And so be with us now as we unite our voices and we share together the prayer that you taught your own disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, choir. Appreciate that so much. I'm going to ask our children to come forward for a moment. Everybody doing all right today? About time for school to start again, isn't it? Yeah. Now next week, I want you to bring your backpacks with you. You know your backpacks that you take to school? I want you to bring those with you, okay? And uh, I'm going to pray over those. And we're going to pray for your teachers. It's important to pray for them. They're kind of nervous about you guys coming. You know that? Yeah. But they're working hard. They've been working all summer. Most of them have. Getting ready for you guys. And, uh, and that's great. You know what this is? That's the Holy Bible. That's right. The B-I-B-L-E. And uh, you know what this book is about? It's about God and Jesus. You know what else it's about? Well, let me tell you. It's about God's love for you. God's love for you. God loves you more than anything else. Your families love you, and your church family out here, they love you. But you know, God loves you even more. In fact, it's described in the Bible, and it, it describes God in a lot of different ways, but it describes God as a shepherd. Do you know what a shepherd is? What's a shepherd? Tell me, tell me, what's a shepherd? Is it what? It, tell me. They watch over the sheep, that's right. And you know what we're described in the Bible as being? The sheep. So God is our shepherd, and we're the sheep. And you know, there's a great story about this one sheep. It could have been me, or it could have been you, or you, or you, or you, or you. It could have been any of us. But this one sheep got lost. And the rest of the sheep were out here, just like all these folks out here right now. And the shepherd looked out and went, uh-oh, I'm missing one. And you know what the shepherd did? You know? You know what he did? I don't bet I was going to say. Well, it's not, well, that's the same, similar story. That's, you're close. But what this sheep did got lost. But you know what? Even though the little boy cried wolf, God went after him anyway. God went after that one sheep. He left all the rest and he said, I've got to go find that one so we can all be together. That's how important you are to God. And I want you to understand that God loves you. You know, we sing that song, Jesus loves me, this I know. Do we do it? The question is, do we know it? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, good. Well, that's what I want you to learn. Today I'm going to talk about the Bible. I don't know if you have a Bible yet, but I hope your parents might get you one if you don't. Okay. And if you don't have one and your parents want some help, maybe finding you one, Miss Tanya and I can help you. We'll work on that and be glad to give you some good, your parents some good suggestions. Let's pray together, can we? Dear God, we thank you for the Bible and what it means to us. It truly is the foundation we need for life. And so we ask you, Lord, that your blessing be upon us. Be upon these children and their families. Bless them all and bless our church. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. I think Miss Tanya's taking you to the little church. Y'all want to go? Y'all can go. All right? The rest of us, we're going to stand. And let's sing together. I think Miss Debbie's going to... Introduce our hymn for us here. And turning your hymnals to page 368, we're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
be seated. Let us pray. Holy God, now as we reveal and, ch and ch receive a challenge from you, reveal the word and receive that challenge, we pray that the blessing of your life be upon us. May the meditation of our hearts and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you. And we pray this in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. It suddenly occurred to me while we were singing just then that people were leaving and people maybe watching by television or maybe even some of you are going, where are those people all going? Um, some of them have endured this twice already today <laughs> and I give them permission to go. So I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, that they're not running away, <laughs> away, but anyway. I want you to get out your note page for today because we're going to continue our series in talking about essentials for living. And if you'll remember, a couple weeks ago when I was with you, we talked a little bit about how we all have a need for someone to come alongside of us. But also, we need a truth, a truth that we can stand on. You know, in this world, there are many, many ideas about what truth is. And we need something that we can truly build a foundation, a solid foundation uh, for our life. And so where are we going to find that in the world? Well, I want to introduce this scripture to you from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, where it says, The whole Bible was given to us by inspiration from God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what's wrong in our lives. It straightens us out and helps us do what's right. My friends, we need that in our lives, don't we? We need something that shows us what is true in this world, where everybody can say, this is true, or there is no truth. We need, not only need somebody, but we need something to say, look, I think maybe you're headed in the wrong direction here. It straightens us out. It helps us do what's right and gives us the strength and the power to do the right thing for living. Now, you know, friends, we talk about this book every week. We share scriptures from this book every week. But there's a question that I think we need to answer, and that is, how do we know it's true? Well, I want to begin by giving you three evidences behind the truth of the Bible that is, supports our faith. Number one, ready? You might write this down. There's the evidence of history. Write that down. The evidence of history. This is a book, my friends, that is rooted in history. It's not about made-up people, not about made-up things or places. The Bible is about real people, real places, real things, real events that took place. And again and again, people who have tried to say, well, that, that's not true. This is full of fairy tales and all kinds of stuff. And I want to tell you, no, it's not. There was a group of people that we can read about in the Old Testament called the Hittites. Now, I've got to be honest with you, for a long time, the church preached about the Hittites and talked about them, but we really didn't know anything about them. Until in the 1900s, when they were digging in Turkey in an archaeological dig, they discovered the capital of the Hittites. And once again, the Bible proved itself true. And so, it is a historical book. Secondly, number two, write this down, it's the evidence of consistency. That's a big word, C O N. S-I-S-T-E-N-C-Y. I'm the world's worst speller, so I've got to help you here. Consistency throughout the Bible. Consistency. Not only do we have this external evidence, but we've got internal evidence as well. You know, when you pick up this Bible, friends, you're looking at a book that was put together, written over a, over a span of 1,500 years by 40 or so different authors, from kings to uh, peasants, to uh, shepherds, to tent makers, they wrote it. And yet all these authors wrote, uh, in writing on three different continents, wrote with agreement on some of the most controversial subjects that our world has today. And then I want to say a third evidence while we're here, and that is changed lives. There's the evidence of changed lives. You know, um, in this very room, I dare say their story after story after story about how this book had an important impact on your life. Am I right? Sure. And, and I'll just say it this way personally. The fact that this Bible has had that impact on my life proves to me uh, that along with the proofs of consistency and history, it's the real deal. Everybody get it? All right, let's go on. 
Jesus said in Matthew 7, he said, Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And what Jesus is saying here, friends, is that you want something to stand on when the tough times come, then listen to what I'm saying. And how can we hear what God says to us in our life? How can we put this into practice so that it makes a difference in our life? I want to say to you that for a lot of people, and probably a lot of you in this very room, nobody's ever really taken the time to show us how to use this book, how to use it as a guidebook for our lives. And so today, I want to walk you through a very simple outline that has been used for hundreds of years that's helped millions and millions of people use this book and figure out how does it fit in my life. Okay, let's get going. Number one, the first thing that we've got to do is we've got to hear God's Word. Write that down. You've got to hear God's Word. Hear God's Word. Want a pen? There you go. <laughs> there, friends, there are a lot of ways you can hear God's Word. You can hear it in sermons. You can hear it on CDs. You can hear it on tapes. But when you hear God's Word, you know, you remember that scripture from Romans 10, verse 17, so it's, it, where it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Every time, my friends, every time we hear God's word, it increases our faith. It empowers our faith. It enables our faith. And that's incredibly good news. But I got some bad news for you. The problem is we tend to forget about 95% of what we hear after about 72 hours or so. I mean, think about it. You come here and you listen to a sermon and you might say, Whoa, I want to do something about that in my life. But before you get out there to your car, the truth is already going away. Can you believe that? So how do we get a firmer grip on this so that it'll last? Well, that's number two. You need to read. Write that down. Number two, you need to read God's Word. Each of us needs to start to read it for ourselves and let this book have an impact on our lives. This Bible is filled with the kind of stories that we like to read. I mean, it's got stories about sin and sex and violence. It's got stories about God's compassion, about God, how God reaches out to people who feel like that they're, they'll never find God. There's stories in there about God working miracles in people's lives. Now, the Bible is filled with stories that are larger than life. It's got stories about people who fought giants and won, about people who got swallowed by whales and others who rose from the dead. It's the cornerstone of our entire civilization, friends. This book, the Bible, friends, inspired the art of Michelangelo, the plays of William Shakespeare, the books of John Steinbeck. Friends, across the globe, there have been an incredible number of freedom movements inspired by this book, and it's changed the geographical and cultural uh, center of our world. And yet, with all of that, the incredible thing is how little we actually read this book. Do you know statistics tell us that across the United States, 91% of the people in the United States own a Bible? Actually, it, the statistic is there are an average of three Bibles per home. Did you know that? 80% of the people in the United States say they believe the Bible is the most important book ever written. 58% of Americans say they believe every word in it. Hmm. So why don't we read it? Maybe we struggle with it when we read it. I mean, maybe we don't understand why God wants us to read it. Does God want us to read this to scare us or to scold us? Friends, Revelation 1. Revelation 1 says, Happy is the one who reads the words of God's message. See, God wants us to read this book because he wants to bring joy to our lives. He wants, the, the, wants, the joy, wants us to have the joy of finding a solution where it didn't seem like there was one possible. He wants to give us the joy of finding a hope where we thought there was no hope. That's why God wants us to read this book. In Deuteronomy 17, it says the scripture shall be his constant companion. He must read it. Listen to the scripture. He must read it from every day of his life so that he'll learn to respect the Lord, his God, by obeying his commands. Friends, God wants all of us to read this book every single day. You know, that scripture that I just read to you from Deuteronomy was written to the king of Israel. And you know what that says to me? That says to me, you know, the more responsibility that you have and the busier you are means it's all the more important that you read this book every day. Get it? All right. 
So why don't we? Why don't we read it? You know, I think one of the reasons is sometimes we have a hard time understanding the book. I mean, think about it this way. Any of you watch sports on TV? I was scanning the ESPN the other day. They were showing this game called cricket. You all know cricket? I mean, they wear really crazy uniforms, and this guy holds this ball, and he throws it at this dude, and he hits a peg, and they got this weird bat, and the guy hits it, and the ball dribbles out to the outfield, and he runs from peg to peg. The crowd is going crazy, and I'm thinking, you know, I ought to be really happy about this, but I don't have a clue what's going on. Well, it's the same thing about the Bible. We read a verse in the Bible, and we think, oh, you know, that's really great. I bet I ought to be excited about that, but I don't know what it means. So let me give you a couple suggestions here. Number one, find you a translation of the Bible that makes sense for you, okay? And if you need some help in that, I'll be glad to help you. You notice in your note pages, I notate a lot of the scriptures, and they have uh, different uh, versions that I use, and you can see some of those there. New International Version, the Living Bible, and on and on and on. Philip's translation, and so on and so forth. Anyway, find a version that you can help, and I'll be glad to give you some assistance in that. Secondly, read this book systematically. Read it book by book. Don't just use the skip and dip or the pray and point method. You know, don't go there, okay? That'll get you in trouble. I promise it will. So let me encourage you to start from the beginning. Start with Genesis and read, and you'll get to Exodus, and pretty soon you'll get to a book called Leviticus, and you'll be going, ooh, I don't know if I can do this or not, okay? So a lot of people, you know, I know a lot of people who determine themselves, I'm going to read through the Bible this year. And they get to Leviticus, and they go, I don't know, this isn't going to work. I want to give you some freedom and some grace today. And I want you to just turn over to the New Testament and start there. Okay? Read that New Testament first. Why? Well, it's not that the Old Testament is not important because it's very important. But read that New Testament first and then go back to the Old Testament and it'll make more sense to you. You probably still won't like Leviticus, but read it anyway. <laughs> okay? Number three, you've got to study God's Word. You've got to study God's Word. Now, just read it, but you've got to begin to really dig into it and study it. And in Acts 17, it says, They accepted the message eagerly, and they studied the Scriptures every day. My family, listen, the Bible really values this whole idea of really digging in, this attitude of understanding what it means. What's the difference between reading and studying? Well, when you study, you take notes. How many of you have ever taken notes? Everybody raise your hand. Hopefully you're taking notes right now. Okay, all right. I just want you to learn from this. Learn something from your, uh, for your own life from it. More than anything, friends, I truly want you to see that this Bible is about God's relationship with you. God's desire to have a wonderful relationship with you. It really is God's invitation to you and me to have this relationship to him. It's like God sitting down with you and saying, Hey, listen, let me help you with that problem you're having with your kids? Let, look, it's like God looking you right in the eye and saying, listen, let, let me show you that there is some hope even though it looks hopeless right now. This book is about God's relationship with us. Get it? All right, let's go on. Number four, memorize God's Word. Ooh, I hear some of you sighing out there. Memorize God's Word. Some of you are saying, Phil, I don't know if I can memorize. I tried that once and it didn't turn out too good. <laughs> but you know, the truth is, we memorize all the time. How many of you know your phone number? <laughs> all right, see? You memorize that? We memorize phone numbers, birth dates. We memorize stock quotes and build business plans. We do it all the time. And yet I've had people say to me, oh, Phil, I can't memorize it all. And yet those same guys will say, they'll give me the statistics for baseball for the last 20 years. You know, it's like, What? Well, the truth is we memorize what's important to us. And the Bible says in Proverbs 7, verses 2 and 3, it says, Guard my words, listen to this, Guard my words as your most precious possession. Write them down and also keep them deep within your heart. Psalm 119, verse 11, and we've talked about this several times in the last year or so, I have hidden your word in my heart because that I might not sin against you. Let me tell you, friends, when temptation hits, where is it going to hit? Is it only going to come while you got your Bible open and you're going, whew, I know what to do with that? No, it doesn't work that way. You've got to have that verse already there, see? Now let me give you a couple tips here, too. Number one, 
Always memorize a verse that means something to you. Always memorize a verse that means something to you. And number two, decide when you're going to memorize. You know, I know some people that memorize in the morning. They get up, they're morning people. They get up and they can do that. Some people make a little song about it, David. They sing a verse and that's how they memorize that verse. Some people do it while they're on the treadmill, walking along, you know, and they're memorizing a verse. Some people do it in the evening before they go to bed. I want to suggest to you that one of the best times for you to memorize a verse is during all that spare, waiting moments that you have in life. You know, spare time? Everybody know that? I mean, how many of you have ever been at a stoplight, for instance, a red light? Yeah, why not memorize a verse while you... You know, over the next year, you're going to be in enough red lights, you can probably memorize half the New Testament, you know? <laughs> and by the way, let me just say this while I'm here. The next time you're at a red light and the car in front of you doesn't move when the light turns green, listen, don't say what you usually say about those people, okay? <laughs> just say, oh, I bet they're memorizing the Bible verse. <laughs> It'll make your day go a whole lot better. I promise. All right, let's move on. Number five. You got to meditate on God's Word. Meditate on God's Word. And the Bible's idea of meditation is focusing our mind on a Bible verse that we can see how that truth fits into our life. See, when you look at the Bible verse and you, you should pause and say, now, how does that truth fit in the way I talk to my kids? You should look at that verse and say, how does that truth fit in the way that I manage my business? You should look at that verse and say, now how does that truth fit in the way that, that I have an attitude today? What, that's what meditation is all about. Uh, why is it so important, thinking about God's word, meditating on it? In Proverbs 4, verse 23, it says, your life is shaped by your thoughts. Your life, listen, your life is shaped by your thoughts. What I'm thinking about today is what I'm going to become tomorrow. Psalm 23, think about it. The Lord is my what? Shepherd. Shepherd. You know that verse, right? See, you memorized that. Oh. <laughs> but can you see God as your shepherd? Can you see yourself as the sheep? Do you see that love? that God has for you. Meditating on the Word. Joshua 1 verse 8, meditate on the Word day and night so that you'll be careful to do everything that's written in it. Look at that. Then you will be, as it says, prosperous and successful. Everybody get it? Yeah. Alright, let's finish up. The last one, number six, is do. D-O. Do God's Word. Do God's Word. In James 1, it says, don't fool yourself into th just listening to the word. Instead, put it into practice. Don't fool yourself. Huh. You know, you can hear a lot of people, or, or excuse me, hear a lot of Bible studies. You can hear sermons. You can hear people talking about the Bible. But you can fool yourself into thinking that you're growing in grace. You're growing in your faith. You're growing in your relationship with God. But the truth is, all you're doing is hearing other people talk about it. And James is saying here, don't fool yourself that way. It's like if I, let's all go down to the Y. You all are down there and exercising, doing aerobics, you know, and going after it. And I walk in there with my lawn chair and sit down. And I open up my big bag of Doritos and I start eating them, you know. And I eat that old bag and then wad it up and pick up my lawn chair and go, whew, that was a workout. What are you all going to think? You're going to think, that guy's crazy. And yet that's how a lot of us are reading the Bible. We're just hearing about it. We can fool ourselves, friends, but the question is, what are we going to do about we, what we've heard today? One of the ways I think we can all decide is, down there at the bottom of your note page, write the words, I will do. And then you finish out that sentence. Every time, every Sunday when you come here, you ought to write that down on your bulletin somewhere. I will do. So what are you going to do? And that word I, by the way, that's a pretty important word. Have you ever noticed how easy it is to figure out how other people ought to behave? You know? It's like, oh, you hear a sermon and you go, I wish so-and-so was here to hear that. It's always easier when we figure out some, to figure out what somebody else ought to do, but when I've got to do it. 
So my family, here it is. What are you going to do about God's word? The value of doing God's word, my friends, is that it builds a foundation in your life that will last forever. In Matthew 5, verse 19, it says, Whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. In other words, not only do them for yourself, but do them so that you can help others be transformed in their lives as well. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do about what we've talked about today? I'm going to sit down, but I want to leave you with one scripture. And this is the memory verse. It's in your notes there. John 13, verse 17. What's it say? Now that you know these things, do them. That's right. This is the path of blessing. Let's pray together. Thank you, God, for the love that you give us in Christ. And thank you for the challenge that we have through your holy word. You are providing us with what we need. And yet too often we ignore it. Lord, help us now to proclaim you as Savior and Lord. In all that we say and all that we do, and may, we, may our lives truly reflect your abundant love upon us. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. I want to invite you to respond to the word by standing with me. And let's join together for our affirmation of faith. It's found on page 881 of your hymnal. It's the Apostles' Creed. And let's join together with our voices as we profess this his historic profession of our faith. Will you join me? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Friends, our ushers are coming forward now, so let's prepare ourselves to offer our gifts and our tithes to Almighty God. Holy Father, you are our rock. On your solid foundation, we live out our faith. As part of our faith, we offer these tithes and gifts to the work of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
remain standing as we sing together our closing hymn, number 545, The Church's One Foundation. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. We thank you, O oh God, for the blessing of this day. And now as we go from this place, may your peace that passes all understanding abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you.